So a few weeks ago, I did a video on Overseer and I had a few questions of people asking, what are the R's? What are you using to manage all your media? Um, what are a few of the things that you mentioned work with Overseer? So I thought today I would do a full walkthrough of my media server applications or Docker applications on my server and kind of talk about why I chose them, what I'm using, um, and a brief explanation on how they work. So without further ado, let's just hop into that. And first up, we will go over the actual media servers themselves. So if you don't know, Plex is extremely popular. It is one of the you know original media servers. It does a really good job. I have the lifetime uh, membership. I usually, around Boxing Week in Canada and also during the Black Friday sales, they will do a lifetime membership to the premium subscription of Plex for around a hundred bucks. And it was very worth it for me at the time. I've had that one for a really long time. And Plex for me personally is the easiest for me to share with everybody else. So my whole family and a few of my friends use my Plex server and this just makes it, this is the easiest way for me to share that with them. Works really, really well for the most part. Um, there are a few things that I don't like about it, but having the premium really does help with that. Plex works really, really well, and I've been using it for a long time. Jellyfin is something I've been trying out a little bit more recently for the past year or so. I've been using it mainly just for local uh, media service. So anything inside my own house, um, so since I've moved up here, I've tried using Jellyfin. I do like it a little bit more. Plex, the Plex app on my TV has been a little bit finicky lately. Sometimes it won't connect to the server. Sometimes it will take a little bit longer to load media. It really kind of annoys me. So Jellyfin has been something that I've just been trying out. Unfortunately, Jellyfin's setup for sharing with people outside your network is a little bit more complicated and I haven't wanted to do that mainly because my family members are not very tech savvy and having to get them to log into Jellyfin is not nearly as easy as Plex where they can just have their Plex account. And it's a super simple process with Jellyfin. You got to connect to the actual server and stuff. It makes it a little bit more complicated and it's not something that I am confident my parents especially would ever be able to do. So that's why I'm still probably going to keep Plex even if I continue using Jellyfin as my local media server for in the house. Plex is going to be the best way for me to do that with people outside the house. Now we get into the actual media itself. So we went over, we went over Overseer a couple weeks ago. If you want to see that video, I'll leave it up here and in the description. Um, Overseer is amazing. It works directly with Plex. And as I mentioned in that video, there's also an Overseer fork that works with Jellyfin. It's not an official one. It's like an offshoot one that people are, are using. Um, the nice thing is though, because I have Plex and Jellyfin, Overseer is talking to Plex and Jellyfin is reading all of that off the same uh, media folders. So technically my Overseer also works for my Jellyfin because I have both set up. Um, so it works super, super well. I love it. I talk about it a lot in that video. It is amazing. And what it does is it allows me to automate using all of the R's without having to log into the R's every single time. And it allows my family members and friends to make their own requests. Um, and instead of them texting me and being like, hey, can you download this? They just go and log into the app. They are on the website actually. Um, they go ahead, they make their request. It get, sends me a notification on Discord and says, hey, someone wants this. I go ahead and totally get it legally. Um, and it just makes the whole process super, super, super simple. Now, the other week I mentioned the R's and one of my friends was like, what are the R's? So if you've never heard of them, the R's is a term used for all of the media consolidation programs that all have a very specific purpose. So first we have Radar, and that is a movie collection manager for Usenet and BitTorrent. What it can do is it can monitor feeds for new movies and it will go ahead and grab whatever indexers and clients that I use, it'll use those and it'll automatically download them. Um, it's super, super handy for new releases. It can be great if you're like, hey, I wanna wait for a particular quality level of this movie to come out. 
um, and be available for me to grab completely legally, of course. It's super, super handy. It'll look at all of the indexers that you use and it'll find the one that has the best connection so that you can get it as quickly as possible. Sonar is the TV show version of that. And it is the same kind of thing. It is a media manager PVR for Usenet and BitTorrent. And what it can do is it can monitor multiple shows. And the reason that Sonar is a little bit more powerful than Radar is just by the nature of TV shows, it will automatically grab the newest episodes of shows as they come out. Um, so this can be extremely helpful for current shows that are constantly being released on a release schedule, you know, once a week, a new episode comes out, it'll grab those new episodes really easily for you without you having to do any kind of work. It'll do it automatically based on a whole bunch of settings. And it does a really good job with that. I use this thing a ton and it does a great job. I really do like it. Next up is Prowlr. And what Prowlr does is it is kind of the central hub for all the R's and it will manage all of my indexers so that I don't have to set up every single indexer individually for my R's. I just have to set them up in one place and then they all speak to Prowlr. So um, it just makes it really easy, especially if I switch indexers or if I wanna add a new one, I don't have to go into radar, sonar, radar, lidar, all of those and grab new indexes. So that's pretty helpful. Speaking of radar, that is the book version of sonar and radar. So it allows me to manage ebooks and audiobooks. Um, again, completely legally. I do a lot of reading on my e-readers. My e-readers are some of my favorite things and my newer e-reader also includes the ability to listen to audiobooks. So having Radar is super handy for me to be able to get those. Honestly, I don't use this nearly as much because I do you actually end up using my library login to grab most of my books. Um, Toronto Public Library has probably one of the best and most expansive library systems on the planet. And I can get any book really, really easily. And I usually get through them in four or five days. So I get them through in my rental period. So I really don't have to worry about that. But when I do need to use it, if I wanna find a more obscure book, I do try using Radar. So Radar is pretty great. Now, LiDAR is a music version, right? So you can kind of get that all of these have their own very specific purpose. So LiDAR is a music collection manager. It does the same thing as Radar, Radar and Sonar, but for music, it can be extremely handy as well. I haven't really set up or used it very much and I honestly usually have it off. Um, maybe in the future, I will look into getting it. I've been trying to figure out a way if there's an automation where it will grab music that are in my playlists on Spotify so I can have those offline locally. Um, but again, I have Spotify, I have Apple Music um, through family pro, uh, subscriptions, so I haven't really needed to use LiDAR at all. Now, next up is Bazaar, and Bazaar is a more unique one. It allows me to grab subtitles for all of my movies and TV shows. This is super handy for me especially because I do watch a lot of foreign films, um, and it's really helpful for a lot of the TV shows, especially ones where they hop in between Spanish and English. Um, it can be super, super helpful getting what are called forced English subtitles, where when it's speaking English, there's no subtitles. And when they go to speak another language, it'll have English subtitles there. Super, super handy. And it's one thing that like, for example, my sisters were watching Narcos. All of the Spanish scenes didn't have any subtitles. They either had to watch the whole show with English subtitles, um, or they had to watch it without subtitles and not understand what was going on in the Spanish scene. So I got them four subtitles using Bazaar. So Bazaar is pretty great. And then there's Recyclar. Now what Recyclar does is it kind of synchronizes your settings based on what are called the trash guides. And the trash guides are a really, really great way to set up all of your R's. And if you do wanna set up any of the R's, I would highly suggest you utilize the trash guides. I will leave a link down in the description below. But the trash guides are basically where I got all of my setup utilities figured out how I was going to set everything up and to make them as efficient as possible um, working alongside one another. So the trash guides are great and Recyclar will 
constantly keep my thing synchronized with whatever trash guides ends up using as the default settings. It's pretty handy. I've liked how it's been used um, and it does a really good job for me so far. So that's my whole media folder. I hope that helps. Um, and then next up we have my ways of getting all of that media. And I use to a mix of torrents and Usenet. If you wanna learn more about Usenet, I will leave a link in the description to the Reddit Usenet wiki. It will guide you through everything that you need in order to get set up as a Usenet user. But basically Usenet is a more community focused way of getting media. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than torrenting, for example, but it's super, super good. It is basically made all of my R's way more efficient and able to get way more media than I normally would have. Um, and I'm able to get things a lot quicker as well, which is really, really nice. So I have Qubit Torrent as my torrent downloader, and then I use Sab and ZBD as my Usenet downloader. And I have everything kind of set up. Again, I used the Reddit wiki to kind of guide me through everything to get my indexer, my provider, um, all of that kind of stuff. Go through that guide if you do want to be interested in that. I'm not going to go through all of that here. I'm new to this as well. I just started using this this year um, as a Usenet user. And it's been pretty great. I've been really happy with it. Uh, it is basically made Overseer able to do all of the work for me and I don't really have to put any effort into getting media anymore, which is really nice. And honestly, that is the meat and potatoes of my media server. Um, the only other thing that I do use is I use a Cloudflare tunnel, which allows my family to get to Overseer because Overseer is not a web hosted app or anything like that. It is locally hosted. My family does not live in the house with me. So I end up using a Cloudflare tunnel to allow them to basically get into my local area network to access Overseer, which then allows them to do their requests. So that is most of my media server setup. And it again, it works really, really well. My family's super happy with it. I'm super happy with it. Um, I like having things being locally available to me. I know that there are options out there like IPTV and stuff like that, but their use is a little bit mixed mixed in terms of how well it works. Um, some of them are great and some of them are great for a short while and then they go down, um, which is the unfortunate part about IPTV stuff. So I've really been li liking the way that I have my stuff set up right now. Now, I do hope that this helps answer any of the questions people had from the previous video. If you have any new questions based on this video, be sure to let me know down in the comments section. Um, I am constantly updating and changing the way that I'm doing things on the server. And I do have a few more videos coming up in terms of things that I'm gonna be doing with the server and new utilities that I'm using and applications that I'm using. But I am super, super happy with it so far. It has been a great addition to my just whole house. I've been really, really loving it. I actually just got Home Assistant set up on a separate computer inside of a VM. It's working really well and I'll probably be doing videos on that. So if you do want to be notified of when those come out and you do want to watch them when they do come out, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when those do get uploaded. Uh, I'm just working on things as I get them finalized and finished. I'm not really recording too many things as I'm going through the learning processes of them because I'm not doing it very consistently. You know, I'll do like a couple hours one day and then switch over to something else. So I am kind of just show, showing them off after I'm done setting them up. If you do wanna see more work in progress stuff, as you can see, I have a whole work in progress thing down here. Let me know um, and I'd be happy to try to do some of those. I have some really fun ideas for videos coming up though. So do get subscribed if you do wanna see those videos. Now, with all that said, I really do hope that this video helped you out. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it again. If you like and subscribe, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors and thank you for watching today this video. If you do wanna see any of the other videos relating to my server, um, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.